Welcome back to part five of the Intro to 3D series for Godot. In the previous parts, we've added objects to our scene. We've created a character that can walk around. And this time, we're going to make a couple small improvements to that project. One, we're going to make it so that our character can't walk off edges, so we can't fall to our doom. And the other is we're going to improve the way that the mouse handling happens. As we're using the mouse to control our character, we're going to learn how to capture and release the mouse in our application. All right, let's get started. So right now we turn when we move the mouse left and right. But the problem with that is if we keep moving the mouse to the right, it eventually goes out of the window and hits the edge of the screen. And we don't want that. We want the mouse, when you're using the mouse to control the character, to be captured, which means it belongs to the window and will stay inside the window. So let's do that first. So I'm going to go to the main scene script and I'm going to add in the ready. So we want this to happen when we run. We're going to call set mouse mode. And then here you see what the modes are. We want to set it to captured. And that will do what we want to do. The problem is that once the mouse is captured, the mouse pointer disappears and you can't move out of the window, which means you can't click the X, you can't click on another window, right? You're trapped in that window. So we need a way to also get it out. And so we'll do that, we'll, pre we'll use the escape key for that. So we're gonna capture inputs here, and if event is action pressed, we're gonna use UI cancel, that's the escape key. If they press the US, the UI cancel, then we can do the opposite and release the mouse. Set mouse mode, and we're going to set it to visible. Okay, so that's a start. All right, let's try that out. So now my mouse is trapped in the window. I can't, I can move around like normal. And if I want to get my mouse out, I press escape, and now I have the mouse back. But we have two problems. One is now that my mouse is no longer captured by the window, I want to be able to move around in my in the rest of my computer screen without the character actually turning. So I want to ignore mouse movement when I'm not captured. I also need a way to capture it again. Right? So now I've, I've hit escape, I've gone off to do something else. Now I want to play some more. I want to be able to click here on the window and capture the mouse again. Let's jump over to our character script. And down here in the input is where we, in the unhandled input is where we're detecting the mouse motion, right? And so we move, we rotate whenever we detect mouse motion. So let's add that we only want to move if we're captured. So we're going to check get mouse mode. And if that's equal to mouse captured, mouse mode captured. And so you can see the whole line. So if we detect mouse motion and the mouse is captured, then we'll turn. Now to get our mouse capture state back when we're not captured is we're going to need to do something when we click on the window. So we're going to do that back over in the main. And now if we, we already have an event for mouse click, and that's uh, shoot. So we'll just keep using that one. So if we click the mouse, if uh, the get mouse mode is equal to input dot mouse mode visible. So if we're not captured, then we're going to set mode to captured. So let's just grab this and put that down there as well. So now if we click, we'll capture the mouse again. So let's try that. So now I'm captured. I hit escape. Now I'm out, and see, now that I'm out, nothing's happening when I move the mouse. And then when I click to recap, I should recapture. And I do, but notice that we're also, it shot one bullet when I clicked. So I want that click to not trigger shooting a bullet. So to do that, we just need to also put here that when we have detected that shoot action and we were not captured and we changed to captured mode, we're going to use set input as handled and that will 
tell the scene tree that this input is done, don't pass it on, and it won't reach the player that time. So let's try this one more time. So now I hit escape to get out. I click to get back, and now I'm in, and any more clicks I do will shoot. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to prevent my character from running off the edge of a cliff. Right, so if I run off the edge, he falls. And that was that's bad if you're out here, you know, walking along a ledge that's over nothing. And I want it to stop if I reach the edge. So here we are at our player scene, and we're going to add a raycast node. And a raycast node projects downwards by default. You can see it casts to zero, negative one y, zero z. That means that means it's pointing downwards. And if we go over here, we can sort of see it's sort of hidden by the y-axis. Actually, let's just do the right view. Right? Now, it's projecting down from the center of the player. So I want to move it over. So it's projecting down from the front of the player. So now you can see it projecting down here. Right? The right view is a good way to just look at it perpendicularly. So it's projecting down from the front of the player. So if I walk along, as long as I'm standing on a block, this raycast is going to be hitting something. But as I walk along and I reach a ledge, then when I get near the edge, the raycast is going to be projecting down and not hitting, hitting anything. So that's how I'm going to know that I've reached an edge, when the raycast stops colliding. So we're going to do that in the code. But first, an important tip, if you look at the raycast, when you first add a raycast or a raycast 2D, uh, enabled is turned off by default. So make sure you turn that on or you will be scratching your head and wondering why this raycast is not working. And we're fine on collision mask, by the way, because since we set the first layer to environment, that's the default one, and that's the one we want the raycast checking with. So we're good to go there. So here's our character script, and right now we have this. We move forward as long as we're holding that forward input. And now we want to do that now only as long as the raycast is colliding. So let's add and raycast is colliding. So let's see what happens when we run this. So I'm going to walk up to the edge. Oh, and see, I can't go any further. I can't walk off the edge. But there's a problem. Let's try jumping. When we jump up in the air, we can't jump forward because as soon as we're up in the air, the raycast isn't touching anything anymore, so our speed is getting set to zero. So that is not optimal. So we're part of the way there, but we need to fix the jumping now. Okay, so we need to do this a little differently. So instead, what we're going to do is when we press the move forward, if we're on the floor and the raycast is not colliding, If we're on the floor and the raycast is not colliding, that's when we want to stop. That's when we want to do nothing. Otherwise, we want to do this. Now, some of you might be wondering why I wrote it this way. Just hang on a second. I'm going to change this around, but I have a reason. But let's think about this. We're, we're setting our velocity to zero. And when we press move forward, we're only adding to it when we're when this condition is not true. So if we're on the floor and the raycast is not colliding. We're going to stop, which is good. That means we walked up to an edge. So let's try it. So walking to an edge works like it did before, but I can still jump forward, which is what we want. So let's talk about that if statement. So looking at this if, you're probably a little unsatisfied with it. It feels weird to have a condition that does nothing and then every other condition you do something. And so how can we simplify this? We can simplify this with a little bit of Boolean algebra. So let's look at a quick example. So this is essentially what our if statement is. We have if A do nothing, else do something. Well this is equivalent to saying if not A, do something. Right? So we want to just take our current condition and negate it. So we could write that. Right? We could put not and then put all of this in parentheses. 
and get rid of the else. And this is going to work, but this is a little bit hard to read too because you have to, you, you kind of have to think about what's going on inside the parentheses and then negate it. It'd be nice if we could simplify this some more too. And we can using something called De Morgan's Law. Now De Morgan's Law says this. If you have not and then two conditions, an and condition in parentheses, you can distribute that not like this. It's not A or not B. So you basically change the and to an or and distribute the not to both of them. So we can do that with our condition as well. We can change this. We get rid of the parentheses. We make that a not. And we make this a not. But since it's already a not, that means we're going to change it to true. And then this becomes an or. So if not is on floor or raycast is colliding, we want to move forward. So hopefully that little example of Boolean algebra helps you later on in figuring out how to construct your different conditions, especially when you have a bunch of combinations of conditions that start to get complicated with parentheses and things like that. Uh, look up De Morgan's Law. I'll put a link to it in the description below so you can look at there's some other rules as well that come in handy for simplifying conditions. That'll do it for this video. I'll see you next time when we talk about other ways that you can build your 3D environments using something called constructed solid geometry. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.